is our motto that learning your joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning! Hello students. Today we are going to see the chapter from your science and technology part 2. Chapter number 1 that is heredity and evolution. In this first part we have covered certain topics that is about heredity, transcription, translation and translocation. In this part we are going to cover certain other topics. The first is about evidences of evolution, then morphological evidences, anatomical evidences, vestigial organs. Starting with the first one that is evidences of evolution. Evolution, we know that the theory of evolution tells us that it's an everlasting process of changes but it needs proof to prove it in this part we have got certain proofs to prove for the process of evolution the first is morphological evidences second is anatomical evidences the third is vestigial organs the fourth is paleontological evidences the fifth is connecting links the sixth is embryological evidences starting with the first one that is morphological evidences in this picture you will see three species of animals the first one is a fox, second one is a sheep, the third one is a dog. If you we'll observe them carefully, you will find that there are certain similarities in the structure of these animals. That is similarities in the structure of mouth, nostrils and ear pinna and thickly distributed hairs on the body. So these are the similarity which indicates that they are originated from a single species. Next is regarding the plants. In this picture you can see three species of plants. The first is a mango, the second is chiku and the third is guava. If you will observe the plants properly, you will find that there are certain similarities in the characters of these plants. That is the shape of leaf, venation, petiole, etc. This similarity indicates that they are originated from the same species. Let us recall this morphological evidences in plants and in animals. First is about the structure of animals. What we notice is that there are same structure of mouth, nostrils and ear pinna and thickly distributed hairs on the body. Similarities in the characters of plants that is the shape of leaves, venation, petiole etc. So these are the evidences which tells us that they have a common origin. So that is about your first proof that is morphological evidences. The second one is anatomical evidences. Anatomy means the study of the structure of bones. In this picture you will see structure of four bones of different animals has been shown. The first is the human hand, second is cat's foreleg, third is patagian of bat and the fourth is flipper of whales. 
now this structures of bones when you observe you will notice that there is no similarities between any of them similarly the use of the structure is also different but there is similarities between the structures of their bones and joints so this similarity indicates that they are originated from the same species the third proof which we are going to see is regarding the vestigial organs now what are these vestigial organs degenerated or underdeveloped useless organs of the organisms are called vestigial organs that is existing organs which undergoes gradual changes these organs must become useless or even harmful such organs starts to degenerates as per the principle of natural selection this process takes thousands of years for organs to disappear and such organs are called as the vestigial organs sometimes they are useful in some other organisms that is it might not be an vestigial organs in some other organisms here we have some examples based on this vestigial organs in this picture you can see a a part labeled as appendix this appendix was useful in humans in the initial stage that is during the stone age when human beings used to eat the raw food to digest it but now this appendix is of no use that is it's a vestigial organ or useless organ similarly the same appendix is useful in ruminants now what are these ruminants in this picture you can see cows and buffaloes which has been shown over there these animals like cows and buffaloes are called as ruminants the next example for the vestigial organ is ear muscles this ear muscles is present in case of humans but it is of no use that is it's an vestigial organ whereas the same ear muscles is useful for monkey for the movement of the ears in the last picture you can see two parts are there first is the wisdom tooth the next is the tailbone or which is also called as coccyx both these two parts are of no use in case of us so they are called as vestigial organs thank you dear students